You are listening to WRPI Troy, the upstate underground, home of Joe, home of Wacky, and of course, home of Glunky. You might know this show as being uh, Nostalgia for the Apocalypse. Uh, I am doing, I'm your host, DJ Bonfire. I'm doing something a little bit different. Uh, we have Under the Den here. Um, and we also have someone who's helping me interview them. Uh, Emmett, would you like to introduce yourself? Hello, everyone. I'm Emmett. Made a few words. Thank you. Um, and we also have Under the Den here. Uh, well, two of the band members, if you two would like to introduce yourselves. Hi, what's up? I'm uh, Ben Zaleski. I am the guitarist and also a vocalist in Under the Den. Um, yes. And my name is Jason Novak. I am the drummer for Under the Den and the twin brother to the bass player, John Novak, who could not be with us. Madison Lewis is also absent today, and they send their regards, and we are going to do our best to represent the band today. Yes. Amazing. Thank you. But before we continue, uh, a little disclaimer. The opinions you're about to hear uh, only represent the people here. Um, they do not represent WRPI, uh, the Rentelier Union, or the Board of Trustees, only the people here, which... Now that the disclaimer is over, I think we all have some pretty rockin' opinions. So let's hear <laughs> some of them. All right. All right. Uh, start off, uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about your mu musical backgrounds? Just as, as a band or just individually? Individually. Uh, I'll, I'll start with this one then. Sure. Uh, so I, I always kind of liked music as a, as a very young child. Um, this was back in the days of, of tapes, which I feel like maybe was a little bit obsolete by the time the two hosts of the show uh, were, were kicking. Maybe not. Um, but I would listen to tapes and stuff in my, my parents' cars. And um, then eventually I got a, an, an organ, like an, just an old sort of home practice organ from my grandfather. And I just started figuring out some stuff that led to piano lessons, which led to other things. Um, I consider myself primarily a guitarist now. But I play a lot of different instruments, uh, bass, guitar, awesome. drums, uh, flute, piccolo, um, r a lot of stuff. So it started there, and uh, I just reached a point where I said music is really the only thing that really brings me a very real type of joy, and like when I do it for a quote-unquote job. Um, so that's that's the cliff notes, I'd say. Yep. All right. Cool, man. I know all that about you. Oh, yeah. That was really cool. Uh, I started later in life. Um, I started going to like hardcore shows, and I was like, I want to be in a hardcore band. And I went and bought a drum set. I could play a little. I started a band way before I was probably ready to play out and got laughed at a bunch sometimes, but it was fun. And I got to play with my friends, and that was always just a really interesting thing for me was like this hardcore punk scene that we had around here was so accessible and so youthful. And uh, it still is, and that's really amazing. And from there, I just, you know, I've been playing with my brother for a really long time. I've gotten to play with a lot of other great people and some other different kinds of bands, and just having fun with it still. And it's really just such a cool ride. Music's such a cool, cool ride. It's a cool journey. It's yep. a fun trip, man. Mm -hmm. I know, that sounds kitschy or anything. Cool. All right. Um, do you want to tell us how... Uh, you four all met um, and formed Under the Den. Sure, I'll field this one. Yeah. Uh, so myself and Madison Lewis had been in a project uh, prior to this. We It was more of a Motown project. And uh, I thought she, you know, that she would, we'd be good if we started more of a rock thing, which was definitely more of my comfort zone. So I got my brother to come play bass. And we had a couple different guitar players come in, but then everything kind of clicked when Ben walked in the room, and we started writing some our first album together. Yes. After doing, you know, a few like cover gigs and stuff, like just having some fun with some other stuff, and that's how we met. We met uh, Ben on either like Band Mix or or Craigslist. One something. One of those internet of things those, where yeah. internet classifies. We for did not know each other local before the band. Yes. As, you know, it was very like Rob McElhenney and uh, Ryan Reynolds. We we knew of each other. We knew of each other's like dealings, but we we actually didn't know each other until we started doing this together. Yes, um, and I was at the time fairly new to the area. Honestly, I had uh, 
moved back right after college for um, a job and some other reasons, um, which I will not bore you with right now. And uh, and I was in uh, a couple bands, and then, yeah, Jay reached out. He said uh, he caught me at just the right time where I wasn't working with anybody, and he's like, you know, we got this project that we're doing. Here's some of the songs, the cover songs that we do, and um, we also do our own original stuff. I said, well, that sounds fun. At least, you know, it'll be something to do. And uh, and now look at us. Yep, here we are. We've, we are. We've really grown from such a from a small sapling into a mighty tree um, of music. <laughs> uh, now for the semi hard question before the hard question. Ooh. Okay. Do you want to describe your sound to the listeners? Oh no. Oh shoot. It's like it's like it's. <laughs> our, I would if I had to no, sum up it. under the den. Uh, I would say it is a smorgasbord of uh, genres um, expertly crafted into an alternative indie funky pop punk milieu porridge. Sure. sure. <laughs> um, I thought it, you were describing it tequila at first. Yeah. And then <laughs> oh, the notes. It's, it's yeah. a little oaky on the yeah, back end. So I'm glad we brought it back around. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I don't know. We write what we feel in the moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was watching this thing on Ray Bradbury, and I think we write music the way he writes stories. We feel it, and then we think about it afterwards. We think about a lot of times we'll just record it on our phone. Madison will have her phone out. We'll be recording stuff. We'll be playing things, and then she'll be like, I like that. Let's go back and listen to it. And then whatever that is, I mean, there's songs that are, you know, uh, have a more Latin feel in nature, have a more maybe reggae feel in nature. There's songs that have uh, more like straight up four on the floor kind of uh, dance music, uh, kind of poppy mm -hmm. natures. And then there's just really just raw songs out there. So mm. I, th I think the big the biggest thing and just a quick example that I can give of, of the way that the process seemed to work out. So when I joined, they had some uh, original songs that they had written, um, Jay, Maddie, and, and John. Um, and I kind of came in, and I kind of started doing my own thing, and they're like, oh, well, that's not really the way that we wrote it, but I, we kind of like that. Um, so then, yeah, it just became about, you know, when someone will have an idea, and then we'll f start fleshing it out. And I think another thing that's kind of interesting about our, our sort of writing and our sound is it evol it's evolved over time and it continues to evolve it's never quite static it's not the same thing every single time which i think would i don't know i think that would be a little boring after a while like i love the songs we play but you know you might hear it different i might play a solo a little different one night um for the most part we keep the bones steady but it's it's fun and it evolves and it's it's just fun to see where it goes toy ben thanks man I love that. I love hearing that. Um, now for the harder question. Ooh. I ask this of everyone. Um, do you want to give me like a 60 second uh, sell on like why listeners should listen to Under the Den? You know, you can have a little bit more than 60 seconds to brainstorm. Okay. I'm going to go. I'm going to take this one. Really okay. Quick. All right. I'm going to, I'll do a little cleanup batter. All right. But so. You, but you do your thing. If you like fresh fun honest music and i know everybody says that but we we really came together as four people who didn't really know each other didn't have like the background of growing up together like some other bands have and aren't necessarily together just because somebody pays the rest of us to play their songs this is an endeavor of a of a true live act and uh, I think we really bring it live, and I think that's where we really shine as a band is in our live show. Even though I love everything that we record and our entire recording process, and you should definitely come check out our albums when you have a chance. Some of the music that you might hear tonight, if you like some more of it, want to hear some more of it, there might be some uh, some places you can find it online. And uh, you know, but uh, we're a live band, and that's you should come see us live. Yes, I, I'm gonna. That's exactly where I wanted to pick up after this. So uh, we. The way I like to think about us and the, what I like to tell people when they ask about us is I like to think we're very raw. Not in a unfinished way or an unpolished way, but just it's very... The, the words that Madison writes, the guitar parts that I write, the way that Jay plays drums and John plays bass, it's all very real. And um, it's all very... 
in the moment and sometimes you know it's it's just all feeling so if you like feeling and you like kind of kind of being a part of the moment uh definitely give it a listen definitely and you can listen to our music streaming everywhere by the way um mm-hmm. yes if you if you if you if that sounds like something that might be cool to you raw uh, then you can give it a listen. You can check out under the dot com, and but it's it's streaming everywhere. Would you say sometimes it might be rugged and raw? Rugged and raw? Uh, I yeah, mean, I, I would repeat. say so. I would say so. I would say so because um, you know, you never know. There might be some bumps in the road. Uh, there might not, but sometimes. Uh-huh. But it's always you know, it's always going to be a good destination when you get there. Sure. I'm going to pass this next one off to Emmett. So one thing that I really love finding out about bands in general is kind of what music... I know earlier you said um, that you listen to cassettes in your parents' car, but I'm always curious as to what specific bands people listen to when they were growing up that they feel kind of influences that the music that they produce. Mm. I'm gonna, for me, uh, uh, the, uh, one of the big ones was the Weezer Blue album. Uh, I think that's one of the art, most artfully... Cr- artfully crafted albums uh, for what it was of the time. And going back and listening to the production now versus now is so uh, crazy. Um, another one it was a band called Candiria for me uh, as a drummer and as a musician. There was a band called Candiria out of Brooklyn. They were the first like jazz metal band. And they were just mind-blowingly amazing live. Just a crazy, crazy live show. Uh, and there a bunch of other ones. NoFX is a huge influence on me. Uh, their drummer. Uh, I'm a big Stuart Copeland fan as far as drummers go. Um, I just loved like how he approached drums. Uh, Buddy Rich too. <laughs> Buddy Rich is another one that you know was was a big, a big presence. There was a reason why b- drummers back then were the leaders of the band. You know, so uh, I I take some of some of that iconicness from into myself and into how we approach <laughs> playing. You know. I like. I really just enjoy playing drums like that. Go ahead, Ben. I'm. I'm no, it's all good. I, I like. It. I like what you're saying. Um, so I'm gonna kind of my 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 influences. I think have always been uh, ever evolving. So I was mentioned about the cassettes. So like the first couple cassettes that I remember listening to, um, if you're familiar, are "Bad Out of Hell" by Meatloaf and uh, "She's So Unusual" the Cindy Lauper album. They were like two of the first cassettes that I remember, like just listening to over and over. And I still know a lot of the like "Bad Out of Hell" almost front to back. Not quite, but it's been a while. Um, but I had a lot of like, I guess you'd maybe call them seasons of my musical taste. So I had a big like hip hop phase where uh, you know Eminem, Fifty Cent, all those sorts of groups. A big punk phase of like some Forty One and some other bands around that area. Metal phase. Nice. Uh, Children of Bodom was my favorite band for a while. Uh, yeah, a little Finnish, Finnish metal. Uh, Led Zeppelin, though, is my all-time favorite, I'd say, um, for sure. Uh, enough where I have a tattoo of them on my body. Um, yeah, so le- it's always Led Zeppelin for me, Jimmy Page. But there's, I could, every, the way I like to think about it is this. Every musician I've seen, in one way or another, has given me, like, a little bit of something to take away. Like, even like the way a sax player plays his solo, I'd be like, ah, oh, interesting what he did there. Or the way that a drummer uh, plays with like the feel of a song, and not saying that I could comprehend it all the way. But I'm like, that sounds good. I know just to say like, I like that. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. Um, so yeah, I I'll- just need to jump back in, and I would be Ooh. remiss if not to mention as far as the people that have influenced me, Coheed and Cambria. And most recently, the Avid Brothers. I think the Avid Brothers mm. are some really good boys. Yes. And that's some really good music. Now, Emmett, if we had to ask you, who, what were the first uh, musical influences in your life? Um, so my dad was... Um, he always tell me the stories of him growing up because in like the 80s and stuff. So I got to listen to The Smiths, The Cure. Mm. Oh, awesome. A, a little Bauhaus, The Weezer as well, because sure. the 90s. And then Nirvana, Green Day... Yeah. All right, a l- yep. little bit of the Beatles, so just a lot of yeah, good youth. Music. Oh yeah, yeah. Yep. All right, good stuff. Thanks, man. Very cool. Just interesting. Yeah. Uh, for the listeners out there, if you don't know, Emmett is one of our members who plays bass, right? Yes, I do. Yeah. So he also has some musical experience along with um, nice. Under the Den here. Uh, yeah. 
Um, so, I like asking this of, like, you know, pop and, like, rock bands. Um, do you ever feel like you have to try new things in order to really, like, stand out maybe from the people in the area or maybe just stand out in <laughs> general? I... I almost feel like I don't want to try as hard. Like, I feel like there's this weird rubber band effect where it's, you know, for me, not saying the things that everybody else is saying to try and do the things that everybody else is trying to do is more effective sometimes than being a part of that ocean of, of attempt. Um, and, and for, That's for me, though. An, an ocean of attempt is a really... <laughs> I've never heard about the ocean of attempt. Um, I don't think I... I think I try when it comes to especially the creative process and in, in making things. I try not to think about it from that angle too much. Like, that being said, I... I you know, as as we go through and as, as a band, you know, I'm learning... I'm always trying to learn new things on, on guitar and about music, I feel like. Because I, I also am a music teacher. So I feel like the more I understand, and the better I am with it, the more I can help my uh, my students when I teach them. So um, I think there's always going to be new things and new sort of layers and aspects that come into what we're doing. Um, though I, don't, I wouldn't say... Um, and I don't want to speak for everybody, uh, especially those who are not here with us. But I would definitely say that um, it's not a thing that I think about too much. I just want to make this stuff that's real to us. And um, I feel like just being honest with music yeah. is a lot of the times more appealing than trying to like fit into a mold well, it was like, I remember Kiss talking about on their documentary, they were like, you know, we're going to try and write songs like this. There are bands that try and write songs like these other bands. It's like, well, you're not, they're the best them they're going to be. You can't mm -hmm. be a better them than they're going to be. You have to be the best you you can mm -hmm. be. So, and I really took that to heart, as, and especially for our approach in writing music. It's not about what anybody else is doing. That's not really how we gauge our success. It's about are we being as good as we can be every day for mm -hmm. this for this thing that we're doing mm -hmm. and is it whatever oh, we're sorry. doing sorry go ahead uh go ahead. yeah and then at the end of you know at the end of the day i i was mentioning before about how songs can evolve and all that over time and uh, i think we all kind of have why why it works so well is we all kind of have the common goal of what's best for the song it is good collaboration. Mm -hmm. Like is like sometimes I've I've had a guitar part that you know it, it was close, but it wasn't quite it. And you know, we'll, and never we'll, that they're bad. We'll, no, no, they're thank you so much. Right. Thank you for saying that. Okay. I would have thought about it all night if you hadn't said. They're something. always good. They're just I would have been the rightest panic spiral be. for the rest of this. Okay. Yeah, you really stink, Ben. <laughs> uh, um, but yes, uh, I think I think that it, that wraps it up. Put a nice sure. little bow on. Yeah. Well, and, and one question that I just kind of was thinking about is um, in your lyrics and your songs and stuff, do you ever try and give a message to the people? Because, like, I always, one thing that was uh, on my mind right now is specifically um, I wrote a paper on Rise Against. I'm mm. blank on their album uh, because I'm trying to block the memory of that final paper on my mind. Mm. But, like, that whole record is just jam-packed with messages and themes about kind of the system and stuff like that so i'm just curious about like if you ever try and do something like that or well that is kind of thematic to punk right like <clears throat> that you're gonna have these kind of dis dystopian kind of ideals that get portrayed in these songs of like calls to <clears throat> to action and things like that um and that's great i love rise against huge fan um that's awesome that you did a paper Was it on Siren it. Song of the Counterculture? Uh, no, it, I'm blank. It, I'm I know it, it's... I suffer in the Witness? Uh, yes, that, that one. Gotcha. Ben was, ben was not going to let it go until he figured it yeah, out. So yeah. We're going to get to the bottom of it. I was going to Emmett, you up, and me, so. we're going to get to the bottom of this. We'll figure um, it out. But no, I don't think we ever... I'm not sure lyrically, because we don't necessarily give Madison the free reign as, you know, as yes. far as lyrics go yeah. most of the time. I would say that Madison does... Uh, put a lot of content if you really pay attention to the words. I think I think Madison is 
good at, especially like she's good at telling a story. I think, and making and like making the song fit into a certain. Um, I don't want to say a box. I don't think that that's exactly Just the narrative. That yes. She's going for. So, like for instance, our tune on the run. It's if you listen to it, it's a song about revenge, about uh, a, the the woman who got pushed too far. I don't want to spoil the song. Maybe you, uh, if you are interested in that, you can go find it on uh, the internet if that interests you and all that. Um, but yes. And then we have um, we have a song that we 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 wrote uh, that's called Easy Prey, um, and mm. that, yes, like mm. so we have songs like that that if you that one's not released yet we play it at our live show so uh, if that sounds like something you might be interested in you might want to come see Under the Den at a live show, <laughs> um, and uh, and that definitely has messages about uh, if you maybe you could tell by the uh, with a song name like Easy Prey what might be going on but. Uh, yeah, we um I think I think Madison definitely does a good job at putting that uh a story but also kind of having a bit of message in there. All that talk is about, you know, not listen like not paying attention to what other people have to say, which is the titular track off of our album, the All That Talk EP that we have. Um that was released in uh May of 2020. Yes. And is out everywhere. It's funky. Amazing. Uh, going on to that, uh, do you guys have a philosophy when either like making new music or performing that like affects how things? Um, it's, I'm sure. sorry about that. Emergency. That's all right. L- oh, no. Little funky guy likes to make a little bit of oh, tunes sometimes. Fine. Just that's a fine. little. Yeah. So, do you have a philosophy when either performing or making new music that affects how that comes about? Hmm. No. I mean, beyond, like, we just, we don't care. I mean, for my brother and myself, we just really want to get out there and just give it everything. Just give mm-hmm. it everything. Just give it everything every time. Give it everything every time. Try and get out of your own head about it, how the day went, how the show went, and just get up there and really try and be in the moment. Be mindful of how how awesome it is, how grateful you know, we get to be in this situation and that we get to play music together. Oh, yeah. All of those things. And then try and push all of that out in the space that we have to just play. Because, you know, yeah. think, thinking while playing is the worst thing. That is the yeah. worst thing to do. Yeah, I think uh, I think the biggest thing... Um, I leave my toaster on. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I think the biggest thing... Uh, that I that I always try to keep in mind uh, is to and I was I had said before about st- staying true and doing what's best for the song, but really at the at the end of the day, you know, we we make the music because we love it, um, and I think it, just approaching from a place of like remember that you love it and having a little bit of fun. I think uh, that's definitely uh, something that enters um, my, my mind for sure. Um, we like that. Was there another part of your question that I didn't answer? I apologize. Um, I got so swept up by Jason's. I don't think so. I think you hit it all. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Uh, We have also um, another interviewer who just came in a little bit late, uh, but it'll be fine. Itzel, uh, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Itzel. Um, I'm not another interviewer. I just wanted to be here. I thought you said that I was allowed to just be here. Okay, you can be here. Okay. You are. But if and you think about a question <laughs> yeah, along anything, the way. Yeah, anything you want to Feel free to have a chit chat. Yeah. Cool. Sweet sweater, by the way. Thank you. And I just want to say, DJ Bonfire, you're doing a great job so far. I really appreciate all these thoughtful questions. Thank you so much. Um, now, since uh, I'm not sure if listeners knew, uh, Under the Den actually came and performed for RPI during our GM week. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. So. Um, how is playing for RPI? Maybe uh, rate it compared to your other live experiences? I would say it was like a 9, if not a 10. Yeah, 9, 10. Yeah. Sure. Uh, I thought the response that we got was really heartfelt. I'll just give it a, I'll just give it a 10. Yeah, we'll just go ahead and give yeah, it a we'll 10. Yeah, we'll just give it a 10. Um, I yeah. can't think of a, a, of a... I think the thing that I really enjoyed... and if every I f- show was that show, I would be so yeah. happy with my life right now. 
Everybody so was like into it. The crowd was really into it. People were shouting. People were shouting. Ah, Ben. So, I'm like, ah, do you know who I am? <laughs> What's going on? And then after, um, this this might sound like a silly thing, and I, I I swear there's no ego behind this, but just the fact that like some of the the, our, the students were coming up and be like, oh my god, can we get a selfie with you? Right now, and I was like, "Yeah, it was just me? nice. Just the, the response was nice. It wasn't I was like you liked our stuff. You like our stuff, and just that you guys have a good community of kids here that are into just seeing bands and seeing live music. Oh and yeah, that's the thing is really awesome because uh, not everywhere has that anymore. Kind of, you know, sometimes what for whatever reason that just doesn't exist places. So it's really cool that it happened here, and you never know what you're to expect when you play." some of these shows and just everybody was nice from the first person that we met to the last person that we met oh yeah um we had a wonderful sound up on that stage i mean uh the other band was great you know uh i can't really say a bad thing about that experience at yes all. At catering all. was cool parking was great I mean, <laughs> catering yeah, was yeah. Like... I mean, the food was good <laughs> so and i thought and i thought for ourselves i thought we as a band played very well, so I was really yeah. just happy with that entire experience. I really hope we get to recreate it sometime soon. Yes, here for or sure, else, or close to here. Yes, it's so. I was wondering if you would like to be like if UPAC or WRPI um, was able to get you guys back on here. Would you like to be the main show, like instead oh, sure. of just sure. the opener? We, sure, absolutely. Of course, if you guys wanted to have us in that capacity, we would love it. A wonderful. Definitely clamor for that, for sure. <laughs> I'll definitely say my opinions of the show, too, if my fellow interviewers want to say their opinions as well. Um, um, un- sure. Unfortunately, I cannot because I did not attend because of a long story of just kind of annoyances. Yeah. Okay, um, Emmett, that's fair. But I did, buy, I did buy tickets. Whoa. So I was going to go, then I didn't go. It's, it's all good. Things happen. We appreciate your intentions. Life Enjoy comes intentions. at you pretty quick yep. sometimes. Yep. If you blink, you might miss it. <laughs> oh, so, God. with my experience, <laughs> I really liked you guys. I actually did my homework beforehand. Whoa. Thank you, Willow. We appreciate that. Yeah, so I listened to a couple of stuff. I, I know that the one that really like spoke to me when I was listening to stuff was On the Run. And when yes. you guys played it, I was like, Wow, that's so cool. And then when you play uh, Garth, that's a haiku, which we will be playing later on. I was like, yes. wow, I didn't, I was re listening to your guys' music and then I didn't hear it at all. I was like, where is it? Where is that song? It was in the works and we finally got it out. We had a couple couple issues with the release, just some stuff we weren't aware of, but yeah. Stuff on the back end. And thank you. Thank you for the yeah. kind words on uh, on all that. Yeah. Especially the live, you know, that the song stuck out live. That's great. Yeah. I also very much appreciate the audience when you guys were playing uh, Drunk and Lonely and they were really joining in. That was very Yes, that was one of the yeah. coolest things. Because I, I, cause I sang it and then I heard them singing back Drunk and Lonely. And I said, are they singing? Are they singing? It, are they chanting back? What a world. What a world. And I had to like really kind of collect myself because, you know, uh, so I'm a, I can be a little excitable sometimes. And yeah, ben. Uh, no, <laughs> yeah, Ben. Um, we once had a discussion. That, sorry to uh, sidebar, but um, you did say that we could do this. So <laughs> um, we once one day in in I don't remember where we were. We were like, maybe it wasn't us. I feel like it was though. We were talking about like what kind of dog would we be? And I'm definitely like like a golden retriever, excitable. Like the ones that you see in like all those uh, Instagram reels. Yeah, I'm a super chill pug. Super chill pug. Super chill pug. Pug life. Pug life. Pug Didn't life. choose the pug, pug life. The pug life chose me. Awesome. Um, Did anyone else have any nice things they wanted to say about <laughs> the show? Uh, yeah, actually, Patrick, Patrick was really like fanboying over you guys. Especially the one guitar player. Who is the guitar player? That's me. That would That's be you the, you're the guitar player. Yeah, okay. That's me. Wait, there were, were there two? Yeah, there were two other people. The vocalist. And the bass and player. The bass player. Mm-hmm. Okay. Did not make it today. Oh, okay. Yeah. But um, but Patrick, the person who was just in here, yes, he was very much like freaking out over you guys. Like he, we both came into this into that performance blind. Like we did not know what was going to happen. Mm-hmm. We only knew that Saint Motel was going to be there, but we didn't know like where it was going to be, who was going to be the opener, or whatever. Um, and and he absolutely loved. Your guys is he loved your 
performance more than Saint Motel. Wow. <laughs> yeah. High praise. Yeah. I also, they were really good. Oh yeah. And they have really great, well crafted songs. Yeah, but it's know? like a different vibe, I think. It's about and, the vibe, man. Yeah, no, <laughs> you know, vibes that day were definitely I feel I mean we felt it. We thought we had it we thought we had a good we had a great time. I mean we had a great time. We're not just saying that because we're back here. Um, we really just enjoy the the genuine enthusiasm after yeah. every song. It's awesome. yeah. sing there, so and that's all we can ask for. That's all we can hope for. Even if it's just two people, on the it, front. It, especially <laughs> knowing that you fine. that you like came in blind to the situation in school, like mm-hmm. you had no idea. And you're just like, oh, and like, oh, this band, this band is good. Yeah, cool. <laughs> that's that's a nice treat to know that um, that we made an impact. Even yes. if, even if we yeah, weren't thanks, the. Uh, the quote unquote stars of the show, mm-hmm. like St. Motel Wells. No, I can quit now that I just hit all my achievements for being <laughs> in a band. So that's cool. Yes. You know, and if I can say something, um, I think it's because, okay, I've, a few of my friends keep telling me, like, if there's a band here, I should go up to them and be like, ask them if they want to come in and, like, play for us in, the, in our live studio. And for me, I will only ask specific people because of their vibe. Mm-hmm. Saint Motel is not a band I would ask to come in because they don't seem okay. I'm sorry if Saint Motel is listening, but like, I don't think. I don't even think. Hey Saint Motel, if you don't, don't, think, you don't turn this listening. off right now, it's, <laughs> Listen, it's in trap. It might get bad. No, but like, I I didn't think they were as cool as you guys. Like them <sighs> as people. Like you well, guys. As I don't people. think they gave themselves the chance fairly, and you know certain times when you get into a situation like that and i'm only speaking from experience sometimes you know you flew in the day before you just want to kind of play the show and you oh. <coughs> sorry excuse me i'm not defending them they i mean the the couple that we met were pretty nice but okay uh, but i can understand exactly what you were mm-hmm. saying well thank you also and, and we're going to be very cognizant of that moving forward as a band that you know we want to be approachable we uh-huh. never want to not seem approachable yeah and that, <coughs> I got that vibe a little bit from them, too. It's, I don't think we'll ever play with them again, so I guess oh. we'll just get into it. But yeah, I was like, yo, we're here. I mean, it's a dunk fest. Okay, you guys got on FIFA. Awesome. But like, you know, you could come say hi. The drummer yeah. was really nice. Yes. The, the drummer was extremely nice. And he was like the most handsome one. I really thought he was going to be the one that wasn't going to be nice. Oh. Because he was just handsome. <laughs> but like, I mean, just Don't like. Don't judge a book by its yeah, cover. Yeah. And he was like, he was like, hey guys, how's everything going? He like talked to us like people. Mm-hmm. And wasn't like the, the rest of the band just mm-hmm. like kind of. And we are going to be very kind. Of, and it was a good learning experience for us. Like we don't want to ever forget that this is mm-hmm. not about that. Yeah. Not about being apart from people. It's mm-hmm. about being together with yeah. people and meeting people because that's what we like about yeah. it that whole after the show was awesome meeting you guys that whole this whole the thing whole this energy oh, yeah. and that sharing of the vibes that was really just amazing it really capped off our whole deal that night oh yeah I definitely do like um, not just you guys but also just local artists in general mm-hmm. are just very like I think when you like um, are young And definitely, like, you see people either on, like, you know, TV, or they're either, like, artists or, like, you know, celebrities. And you think they're, like, not approachable because you see them as, like, the icon on TV. Mm -hmm. A lot of the local artists, I definitely have this feeling interviewing a lot of them, is that they're just people. Mm -hmm. And they like being people. I liked how fast you guys will, except for the one uh, break in between our email chain, you guys were just, like, fast about things. Mm -hmm. And you guys were super chill to do it. It was, like, you're just people... We just wanted to do stuff with us, and yeah. I really appreciate that. Thanks. Oh uh, yeah, we we you know every I, everybody's just a person, really. At the end of the day, I um I remember something. Good thought, ben. Some, well, <laughs> I had a story. I was winding up for it. Gosh darn it! All right, so I remember because I remember being a uh, like a teenager going to shows. Uh, I grew up downstate closer to Poughkeepsie so the the venue for me was the the Chance Theater. Oh yeah. Um and I remember if if anyone here is familiar with the the band the Red Jumpsuit Apparatus. Uh they I had a them, they had a ba- uh all right. Um <laughs> uh the singer I remember meeting the singer and uh I've always kind of been a little shy of it, and you were kind of mentioning the thing about you know, uh, seeing people and like being like oh man like putting them up on like a pedestal and 
It's like, you know, you can look at me when you talk to me. And I was like, I'm, so, I'm just nervous. Yeah. I'm sorry. But I remember, and that kind of stuck out to me. And just, I, I, it made me think that if I ever end up being fortunate enough to do music in this capacity, to never want to seem like I was above anybody, you know, just be, because I have songs that might be on the radio or on the internet or wherever. Like, so? But I did go through that in my mind. Like, if I was on the red eye from L.A. to here to, like, Albany Airport and I had to, for, you know, and they, they bust down. We're super grateful for the opportunity. But, man, I just got, like, five hours of sleep and it's supposed to be three hours later than it is right now. Like, I could see just wanting to chill and get the show over with. And I, you know, so grace. Grace there. Yeah, we'll that's actually grace. not what I meant, though. Okay. I meant as in, okay. not not that day. <laughs> no, no, no. It, that that makes sense. That makes sense. I do, I I do get that. Um, and I do see that, and I will like keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. But I meant before even the even before like the day of the concert, mm -hmm. I meant like just seeing pictures of them and the way oh, they they present themselves, even in like their like their um. Um, like album, they're just like just, just the vibe, just like headshots yeah. or okay. stuff like that. Like the vibe is like, oh, these guys are not silly enough for me to approach them <laughs> and for them to be like, like, oh yeah, like I vibe with you. You know, I mm. I don't think I maybe okay, like gotcha. maybe just like the two main guys if they're two main guys i don't know definitely the main guy I cannot like approach and be like, oh, he's gonna be a silly guy that I can vibe with. Um. Oh, I see what you're saying now. Yeah, I do. Yes, thank you yeah. for the clarification. Yeah, um, yeah. I don't know how to be. Uh, I have this little. Uh, I have this little problem with anxiety, where if I feel like I'm be, I am being outwardly like rude or dismissive, it makes me feel bad. And then I, so I, you know, I just try to be good to people. Right? Oh, yeah. Unless I have a reason to not be, which not too many people. You know, if I treat people bad, I feel bad. I have this thing. Yeah. Or if I treat people bad, I think well, that's like just my, called my, being a good person. Well. <laughs> my my brain does a lot of uh, stuff that I don't always like it to do. Luckily for me, I don't. So have even that if way. even if like I I think I might like I thought I maybe took the wrong tone when I said something, or that the, what I'm trying to say isn't clearly conveyed. I'll think about it for longer than I probably oh, need no. to. But I've gotten a lot better at it over the years. Yeah, no, I'm just going to go home and go through this entire conversation by myself and just reassure myself that I didn't say anything too bad. So. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be most of my night after this. Sweet. But I'm not anxious. Or anything. But thank you for saying that that we seem chill from our vibe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. thank you. Cool. Vibe accomplished. <laughs> Speaking of some more vibes, um, you guys had a recent single that I mentioned before, Harg, mm -hmm. uh, Garth. That was a haiku. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you guys want, yeah. we can. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys want, uh, let's play it, and then maybe you guys have some thoughts about it. Sweet. Sure. Right.
Amazing. I'm a little sad though that the best part of that song, well, for me, um, was at the very end. That rock, you had to. I, I like the very end of that song. Awesome. Yeah, that's our Thank little you. switch up. It's not because the song is over and you don't have to listen to it anymore, <laughs> right? <laughs> no, of course not. Okay. Thank you. But the yeah, we like the switch up there. That was something that actually Ben brought to the table. He was like, "What if we just what if we just went left left with it? Yeah, with this riff. Yeah, and we were like, "Yep, yep, that's exactly how that song's gonna." Mm hmm. Yes, it was. It just felt like a nice little uh, little fun way to like switch it up and keep it like us. Like we just had this like something minute long soundscape of you know kind of chill and kind of airy and kind of like big and then just like bam hit it in. we threw a we threw a little little behind the scenes on the production threw a throw a cowbell in there little donkey yeah and then uh but and i think at some point we had this idea that eventually that might turn into its own song and it would be like this really cool like you know dramatic transition and then we just started writing a bunch of other stuff. Yes. <laughs> so, but yeah, it would have been neat. the best laid plans of mm. mice and men and mm. all that. Do you have any more behind the scenes stories you want to tell us about? Maybe making this song or any of the your other songs. Mm. Okay, I have one here, and I'm not going to give away exactly what it is. But if you go. But I'll just say, if you find this interesting, you can find out. <laughs> <laughs> On that song I was talking about, the uh, all that all that talk, the uh, the title track off of our EP. If you listen very closely at the beginning of that, there um there's some audio in there that we recorded, and when we were out at uh, the recording company, shout out to Tim Lynch out there at the recording Ooh, company, Tim Lynch in uh, Esperance, technically, yeah, Esperance, Esperance, New York, yes. Mm -hmm. Um. He wanted to do, he had this idea to do this like bit of uh, intro noise on the song, and we recorded it kind of in his place that day. And uh, so we, we just got a little silly with it. So um, there is, <laughs> I do a, a voice in there, um, an impression, if you will, of a certain uh, character. And if you hear it and you know what it is, uh, send. Uh, under the den, a message. You're not going to get anything, but I'll give you a you lot might. of a lot of. Cr well, you might. You might. You if might. You listen to this and actually put in all that work. We might yeah. Give if, yeah. If you hear the if you hear the that. impression, and if that's something that you would like to do, uh, all that talk is streaming everywhere. Everywhere. Amazing. Wait, is that the only silly thing? No. Uh, that we can think of this entire time. Well, I thought I was kind of hoping that you were going to come up with something. Uh, uh, <laughs> well, you know, with my. Pro uh, a lot of silly stuff. There's a lot, like, so, for On the Run, that's an actual discussion my brother and I are having uh, in the beginning of the track. Ah, uh, yes. About starting together or not. We're, like, going back and forth, and we're, like, adorable like that. So, like, mm -hmm. we left it on the record as kind of, like, again, just... Like, this is how this really happened. How the, the start of this song We all start really, together. This is the moment, yeah. yeah. It's like, no, we don't. No, and we're, like... And the math is like, yes, and that is the actual conversation that started how we actually start that song. So yes. we thought it was kind of, I thought it was kind of funny just going through like these live recordings on my phone that we got like this mm -hmm. inception of this song on, on tape. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of a funny bickering between my brother and I. We had, uh, for that song that we just played, uh, Garth, that was a haiku, we were having a, uh, a heck of a time naming it. And I remember, uh, one day we were we were in our practice space. We were just kind of uh, talking nonsense because initially we thought we might call it Shine, um, and we couldn't decide on a name. We couldn't decide on a name. So then we just started saying. I just, thought Death Race for Love, but that's I guess that's already taken. <laughs> and then um, I was just start. I just started saying things. Uh, and I said the uh, the line. It's a line from Wayne's World. If you weren't aware, anybody who might be <laughs> listening to this, uh, there's a scene, and when they're in the television studio, and Garth says to Wayne, "We're looking down on Wayne's basement, but it's not Wayne's basement. Isn't that weird?" He's like, "Oh, Garth, that was like who?" Um, 
that's it. And we just kind of said it, and that's where it got its name from. Uh, in terms of like, it has nothing to do with the song <laughs> or the vibe of the song. No, nope. but I'm it's a fun, sure it's a fun story. Heavy, I'm pretty sure her lyrics are pretty heavy in the song. Uh, but it's the, actually uh, it's a song about okay. uh, empowerment. I'd say sure about uh, rising up and uh, breaking through the grime. So shine, shine. Um, but in that, it's yes. definitely not as light as maybe something like the title might suggest. But that's also yes. that juxtaposition is funny to us. Mm-hmm. It's just funny to <laughs> it's funny to me. In terms of just like other production things, uh, not too much behind the stories. I what I will say is um, a lot of the production is done in house, meaning my house in my studio. Um, the the drums for these uh, the last couple singles that we've put out uh, the drums were done at the recording studio the place i had mentioned but uh the mixing um is done mostly done in house and all the production stuff and uh who did we who did we use for um so mastering the, um, last time last time we went to west west side West West Side music who's done every i mean they've done everybody they've yes. done like all like these cool like saves the day, like all these cool bands. So, like. so in that way, also, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of the mixing I've actually done. I'll take my setup and I'll go over to Jay's house and we'll just hang out and listen and kind of nitpick and really t- try to dial in the sound that we want. Make sure it tra- starts to translate a little bit better. So, I guess it's fun in the sense that you know, not only have we you know, made these songs, but we also kind of have been growing in, uh, like, the studio and kind of production side. And, and even with them, we'll, we'll come up with ideas, like, in Garth as well, I don't, you know, we talk, I talked about the cowbell, but I also added, um, if you listen closely at the end, there's a little piano part that I was like, let's just throw it in there, and let's just see what happens. So, just being able to make decisions like that, have we've grown with that as well. Yeah, I love that. I remember uh, when you guys were playing live mm-hmm. and you said the name of the song, Garth, that was a haiku. Mm-hmm. My friend next to me was like, what was the name of that song? And then I was like, I'll just say whatever I thought the name of the song was, which mm-hmm. was Garth, that was a haiku, which I was right on. Nailed it. And I said that and I was like, it definitely was not Garth, that was a haiku. <laughs> it definitely <laughs> was. Nailed it. Oh yeah, you got it in one. Yeah. That's all you needed. Uh, so, maybe a little hard question to no. ask. Um, well, it's a little hard question for me to ask to you, so Ooh. I'll give an example. So, uh, the internet, you know, it's been changing a lot about how artists release music, mm-hmm. um, uh, release and produce and get it out there. Um, an example of this is um, a band I like called Poor Man's Poison. Mm. Uh, they originally did one album and then they started doing singles and they're like, we only release singles now because singles is what they best chart with. How do you think the internet maybe has influenced how you guys release music? Uh, well, we definitely went, we saw that that trend back to singles was happening and we thought, yeah, this is this is neat because in the, in the age of episodic content, singles make sense. Singles... Mm-hmm. So singles really being the the promotional material to promote a final album, right? We're going to dribble mm-hmm. out a couple few singles, which is essentially what we're doing right now. Yes. We're going to dribble out a couple few singles. Once we have those singles done, kind of like the 1975, we're just going to package it and call it an album and sell them as a unit mm-hmm. with some really cool artwork and some other mm-hmm. collectible stuff and some other, you know, tangible items that fans can can hold on to and, and you know, build our universe with. And... Uh, we noticed that early on, and I I think it's cool. I mean, there's an ocean of there's an ocean of music that's mm-hmm. happening every day. Ocean of new music every day, right? Oceans. There's those the the numbers on on these streaming platforms are staggering. How mm-hmm. many people have access to making music? How many people have access to releasing music now because of things like Amuse.io, because of things like TuneCore, because of you know uh, CD Baby and these other third party companies that are now acting as distribution houses for independent artists it's really changed the game as far as kind of how much what you need to know about the new music industry it's a new music industry uh and it really leaves a lot to the artist to figure out 
before you get to any kind of level where anybody can actually or will actually kind of get behind you without a certain amount of work done. Mm-hmm. So figuring out where to go and how to how to release that music in an effective way is definitely all the things that my Instagram tells us about is these are the things you need to know how to effectively market and release your singles and how to how to you know decode the Spotify algorithm and all these things that I prior to the internet you did not have to care about mm-hmm. as an artist yeah I, uh, I I yeah I just think the the reality is is a lot of the time you know it's all about see I don't even know that this is true but it, it feels like it's all about kind of like the bite size so a song as opposed to an album or just like a little clip as opposed to the whole video. Um, but based on the metrics of the yes. algorithm, right? You can't right. you can't put a two minute video up because the more that people don't watch the whole thing, the less ratings it gets on the algorithm, the less it gets pushed on right. people. So let's keep things twenty seconds or less. Yeah. Reduce the entire human attention span in the process so that we can keep things marketable. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I will say I will say to <laughs> to that effect. Um, to that effect as well, I do love a, a good album, and I think that there definitely are, you know, folks out there who will, you know, listen to just full albums. Like for instance, um, when we first got here, we we're talking about uh, a Taylor Swift. You know, even though she does put out the singles from them, I feel like when the album drops. But then we're we're also talking about you know a Taylor Swift. We're not talking about you know a local indie group. And I feel I feel especially for the the indie groups, the singles is sort of the the way of the... It's it's affordable. Sure. And, you know, vinyl's backed up six months, eight months out. If Mm -hmm. most people who do want to put out albums now do want to put out vinyl, Mm CD is... Vinyl's back in a big way. Vinyl's back in a huge way. I mean, that that in itself, that and digital downloads are really the, the truest mediums that we have right now that have endured. And we all know that there's an issue with digital downloads and everybody likes... To mm-hmm. just listen to digital music, mm-hmm. and but it's, I like how it's it's made it come back around. Right on. That because we have these new devices and because the technology is there and because the access is there, now we want to hear the real music again mm-hmm. with vinyl. Right and on. Like that, so. Yeah, I I love that. Um, like, especially for listeners who don't know. Uh, WRPI has a collection of about 60,000 vinyls. You know, don't hold me to that. And we... We'll count I'm going to count every single count. one. <laughs> and if it's not 60,000... should take that about 30 seconds. Of <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let me get the dimensions, <laughs> then I'll get the math going like that. And I know especially... I like getting vinyl, and I know Emmett also likes getting vinyl as oh, well. Oh, yeah. I, I have a personal collection of vinyl. I started... Um, right on. Is kind of... I unintentionally got into it because I went down to Soundhouse Records in downtown Troy. Nice. And um, they had hot... Have you ever heard of the hardcore band Hot Water Music? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Gainesville, yep. Florida? Yes. Yep. I love them. And I awesome. found their newest record, Feel the Void, and I was like, why do they have this? Like, no one knows it. Like, I know they're pretty... it's Troy. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I That's bought awesome. that. That's I bought, awesome. So I bought... that record and i told my dad i was like i found this record because he got into hot wire music from my uncle who would play with them hmm. uh he was a drummer in a hardcore band back in like the 90s and stuff right on. um and so for christmas my dad was like here's a record player i was like nice that that's so sick and then he got me three records um head on the door by the cure Mm. Blue album by Weezer, nice, and then ne- and then Nevermind Burn- by Nirvana, nice, also a great album. That's how the that's how the addiction starts, man. And you start with a couple records, and then you're uh, <laughs> you're just going digging in those dollar bins and being like, oh, this is in pretty good condition. I'll, I'll take it. Maybe the sleeve is a little mm-hmm. damaged, but the record's still good. And then uh, then you got like you end up with I have I think maybe three or four full like full tubs. Of, of, of records in my house. Yeah, I start off January, come back from Christmas break mm-hmm. with four records. I now have 16. Excellent. Oh, those are good numbers. Yeah, well on your way. Oh, yeah. 
I, uh, to your own WRPI collection. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, I don't even know how many I have at home, but it's it's over well over a hundred. It's it's hundreds of, of mm-hmm. records. Um, that's just that's from years of just kind of doing it. And I don't. I think at once I got to an age uh, where I was trying to be a little bit smarter with my money. <laughs> uh, I was like, well, maybe not so many. Maybe not so many trips to. Uh, I went. I would go to Last Vestige because I used to live in Albany, so Last Vestige over there. Uh, I'm not positive that they're still there. I think they might mm-hmm. be there. Cool. I think so. I haven't been on Quail. Um, they're still on Quail, I think. River Street Beach Shop I went to a few times. Yeah, I go there. Mm, right on. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I just, for me, I think what the, the thing about vinyl is, and this might sound a little silly, but I'm all, I'm, I like process. So it's the process of, you know, turning on the turntable, putting the record on, dropping the needle, having to flip it, I don't know. There's something about that to me that I just enjoy. And just the smell, the smell yeah. of the sleeve, mm. just like that uh, the history. The smell of an old sleeve, fresh from the from well, just the like pawn smelling shop. a book. You know, there's like yes. there's 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 yes. there's, a, there's a nostalgia there. Anyway. Yes, a certain uh, a certain uh, age to the books. Uh, sorry, according to Google, uh, Last Vestige still exists. Awesome. Excellent. Good to know that they're good to know they're still doing it. Way to yeah. go, guys! <laughs> yeah, I actually want to speak about what you said about like um, the process, because mm-hmm. you know, especially in like this day and age where you know a lot of things can just be like automated or just like you kind of go brain dead mm-hmm. about it. It's really nice to have something like vinyl, which is <laughs> make sure that you get to that song. If you mm-hmm. want to repeat it, then you have to do it again. Uh, and then, like, you know, 15 to 22 minutes later, you have to flip it over. Mm-hmm. And a lot of that intention makes me, I know for me, when I listen to vinyl, I'll think about it a lot more mm-hmm. because I have to have a lot more intention with it. Yes. Yeah, I think I think that's definitely um, Interesting. a part of, of, of the process because it's, it's a thing you're, it's kind of, a, it's like a thing you're committed to for a time. Because if you have to stop it, you know, you, you do have to physically... It's not just, I press a button on my phone and boom, now it's off. You have to go over. Depending on how, how much you want to take care, you got to turn off your turntable. You got to take the... Take the put it back in the sleeve. It, even then, it's a whole process. And, and, you know, and it speaks to more of, I feel now, a lifestyle. Like, I do not take the time to listen to vinyl because I don't have time for all that. <laughs> uh, I listen to stuff on my phone. And hopefully it sounds good. If it doesn't, I'm still probably super into it because it's what I want to listen to. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, it's that's interesting because I don't put as much of a process into listening to music, I guess, as a musician as other musicians do. I think, and I don't listen to music as much as other musicians. Like I don't listen to music in my car. I'm not really rocking out to it all the time. But I did go like. There's always this thing where you write a song that's musical. It sounds like this other song. Well, if I never heard that other song, then there's no possible way it can sound like that other song. So I kind of shut myself off mm-hmm. listening to music for a while because I didn't, especially when we're writing, so that there's no way that there that I can be unintentionally Sam Smithing something. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? <laughs> Just there's no way. I didn't. I've never heard that song. So if it sounds anything like that song, that is completely unintentional, and we just exist in the same universe. Mm-hmm. And that's and there's only so many notes on a guitar. That's why the song sounds the same. Yeah. I mean, even if you did listen to that song, or if you have listened to that song, mm-hmm. or even heard like parts of it, I think the whole point of creativity is to create is to take like bits and pieces of like what you have already experienced and like mesh mesh it together Definitely. oh for sure Definitely. so even then like i don't think it would be a bad thing if you did unintentionally or intentionally take a piece of something you've experienced before and put it into something new <laughs> we don't think so either but there are definitely publishing houses out there who would disagree sometimes uh. <laughs> and people who are getting a little you know i've <laughs> Ed, Ed Sheeran's Ed Sheeran's on, on trial oh, right yeah. now. Our, for, I uh, had a buddy, oh uh, man, a producer from this area. He went off about. He's like, listen, they are not the same song. He was really. Uh, I was like, tell me how you really feel, man, because he with this Ed Sheeran thing with this lawsuit. He's like, listen, this is getting ridiculous. You can, you know, there's only so many things you can do 
and he's like and if you listen to these two songs like simultaneously you can hear that what you want to do is tell somebody to shut up because they can't hear the song because they're not the same song they're not the same song at all and it was hilarious and that's yeah but you know hearing is in the ear of the beholder and again it was just for me as a tactic and then I never really got back into listening to music as much as I used to. Fun, funny enough, I, I also don't always... I listen uh, vinyl at home, but when I've been driving lately, it's just been a lot of a lot of podcasts. I think sometimes, even though I, I love music and it's what I do, at the end of the day, it also still is, like, my job. Wait, what about at the beginning of the day? So, so sometimes there's no better way to start the day than uh, a record on the player, hot cup of coffee... Just listening to the the birds chirping on a spring day. Yeah, you know. And just oh yeah, but I love it. But then sometimes I just want to uh, just want to listen to podcasts about serial killers and things like that. So you know, it's yeah, a funny, ba- you know, it's a ba- it's a balance. Well, it is a funny podcast, even though the subject matter might be a bit heavy. But it's funny. All right. Yeah, yeah. I find that very interesting. Uh, just because, like, for me. Like mm-hmm. music is such a big part. One because I'm part of WRPI. Yes, and so I also like I find it an accomplishment when on like Spotify, seeing how many days of listening to music I have compared mm-hmm. to other people. If I can outbeat someone, I'll be like, yes, yes. I listen to more I've music than I'm you. Real, and I find it really interesting that you know, like, like you said, um, that like it is your job. So like you don't want to be experiencing. Like you want to make sure that that even when you're like playing music mm-hmm. as a job, you're still trying to keep that fresh. Oh yeah. And sometimes you need to separate uh, yeah. like music as a job versus music as um, something that you do in your free time. Yes. Uh, as a uh, as a great punk band once said, you got to keep them separated. <laughs> Thank Whoa, you. Whoa, Ben. <laughs> oh man. Sorry. Well, not. And you got to get hungry for it, you know? I hungry mean, like Especially, wolf. like, when it's something that you're doing every day. It's definitely, you know, taking a break from it and taking a step back from even the grind of doing what you mm-hmm. love every day can be refreshing. And yeah. Can, and can give you that space to really miss it. Yes. And that's, I guess, a good in any good relationship that you need to have time to miss space. something. space. You need to have a healthy, healthy space. And it, with our relationship with music is no different. Yes. We, you just brought up the time listening to music. I was gonna bring that up. Is that I've been, uh, I I think only one person I've met beat out my Spotify Wrapped minutes mm. listened to last year because I it said I had seventy nine thousand six hundred forty minutes listened to. I did I broke that down. I think that's over thirteen hundred hours in a year mm. of just exclusively listening to music. What are your minutes? I'm not revealing that to the public. Oh. Is it 525,600 minutes? <laughs> I don't even remember because, like, uh, Spotify rap season comes and I brag about my minutes mm-hmm. and, like, my top stuff. Like, I was bragging about how it, I was part of the top 1% of Arctic Monkeys listeners <laughs> oh. for, like, an entire month. And then I just forgot about it and didn't really care about telling people. <laughs> I was in the top 0.5% of Sufjan Steven listeners. Nice. Whoa. Yeah. Interesting, guys. Just got Casimir Pulaski down repeat? Uh, no. <laughs> that one, I've, I, I cannot. It's really <laughs> sad. Yes, it is. I would actually listen to... I mean, I would actually cry to um, the predatory wasp of the Palisades is out to get, to get us... I would cry to that song. Surprisingly, not to Casimir Prolowski Day. Are we gonna Are we gonna talk about songs that we cry to? You? We don't have no, to. No, we, we don't have to. About you guys. Everything yeah. by the Abraham Brothers. We don't have to. Um, oh, I had a question. Kobe. Um, wait, we are off the topic now. But I had a question <laughs> from like way back when we were talking about vinyls, and um, I like to listen to albums that have a lot of like really seamless transitions between the songs mm-hmm. um do you guys do that first that was my first question and the second question like would you if because you're on vinyl like if you do like record to vinyl like how would, 
I don't know. Like, would we have seamless transitions that? into if if we were to craft a vinyl? Would our songs have like kind of seamless transitions? Is that what you're asking? Yeah. I would like to think that we figure out key wise a way to do a couple good segues. Mm-hmm. I would like to think that, like you know, something. Uh, and I do we do anything like that live where we bring stuff into other stuff? Um, not, not as artfully as some other bands that I've heard as of recent. Uh, most most recently, I would say. The best album I've heard recently that's done that of like se- just a seamless transition from song to song was um, "Cosmic Thrill Seekers" by Prince Daddy and the Hyena. That was like just start to finish, and then the last song is the start of the first song. So you can just huh. listen to the album on repeat, and it will just play itself continuously Dang. like a madman. Um, <laughs> other, but we know our our songs because the song is kind of a complete thought in itself. Yes. We haven't really found a way except doing like movie quotes in between songs and stuff to really like gracefully, artfully segue between mm-hmm. because they are there's a, there's just a different feel usually yeah. and and we don't write them in a succession in which we would play them. Okay. Right. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. We don't write them in a way that so we'd have to construct that act. Yes, we would we i think i think we have we haven't thought about it too much we have we would have the ability to do so but i don't think we've planned it out as such and i think that goes more toward our writing style as well yes uh, we kind of I would agree some of you know we approach things a little differently than most other like i guess rock bands where like the singer and the guitar player are like okay drummer and bass player here's what we wrote and here's what you guys are going to play to it where oh, you know, a lot of more so our song creation is collaborative. Where sometimes my brother and I will have a, a drum and a bass beat, and we're like, "Hey, what do you guys think of this? Do you think this is cool?" And they'll be like, "Yeah." Uh, you know, Madison will be like, "I think I can, I can work with that. I think I have something for that." And then Ben will just be like, "All right, I'm gonna tickle, tickle these strings and see what's up." <laughs> and you know, so for not having that unidirectional approach of songwriting it holds us back a little bit in being able to do things like that because there there isn't always an entire concept involved with the lyrics and the music at once but it also opens us up to these ideas and to these avenues that I don't think we'd get to if there wasn't as many voices in the room all the time and it can get frustratingly slow and we've definitely lost songs in the mix because we've just moved on to stuff that seemed to be an easier path to mm-hmm. completion, right? Yes. But, um, you know, that's just the way it goes. Or maybe that we gelled with a little bit more. Yeah. Like, we're we're yeah. really liking this, the way this feels. But it's like writing jokes, you know? I mean, it's not like they're bad. They're just not hitting the way these other jokes are. So we're just going to go with these jokes right now. And we'll work on getting those other jokes to where, you know, those other crap pieces of the set, you know, where they need to be. Mm-hmm. If we get there. Otherwise, yes. they're just lost into the annals of time. Right. And whatever. And that's also cool. That, and that's it. Mm-hmm. I mean, you could say like a joke or a song that just like never really ends up working out. Like, mm-hmm. is that even a song like worth releasing even by bit? Because like, if it never really like got to its greatest potential, like you know, maybe yeah. just like let it be gone with the wind. Yes. Yeah. If we as an artist can't get behind it and can't find a way to make it true to ourselves as ourselves mm-hmm. and as the unit, then yeah, there's no there's no, no sense way. forcing it. Yeah. Even if it sounded cool. I have another question. Sure. So, like, what is the percentage of music you you would say that is, like, released versus, like, what you've made, like, all together so far? Oh, that's a good question. Oh, geez. We have about at least, I would say, we've probably released about a a quarter of what we've written so Mm -hmm. far. Quarter to a third, I'd say. Well, yeah. Well, there's there's a lot of stuff that's in different levels of of completion. Yeah. We write. All, I mean, we write something all the every time we get together. There's something new that comes up that gets in the way of what we're, we're currently working on, and then we'll have to come back to it. But it's there's there's always a constant creation process. Yes. So. Yeah. So I'd say a, that. Around quarter to a, a third is is pretty close to because we got our we have our six song EP and we've released four. Is this four? This is four singles. And I could think of at least eight, eight, yeah, eight, eight, eight to nine, ten that yeah, uh, albums worth at yeah, least that we haven't uh, recorded. Some we haven't even 
you know record yet, but we we play them. We'll play them out. Yep, just mm-hmm. try them out, see how they feel, get used to them. And I also think that just to keep it uh, in the hundred percentile, I think the playing it out is also, you know, where what part of what helps us in the writing. I feel like you know to bring it back to the the comedian thing, comedians will try out bits in their set before their before their special. They'll go try it out at a show and if it's not working they they won't work it if you know if we have a song that's not really working out live i feel like that's kind of when we're like all right well maybe let's come back to this or on the flip side really say like all right what are we going to do with this to make this hit more and then it all just kind of works together from there sure Mm -hmm. my bro's so mad that he's missing all of these comedian bits that we're bringing up because he's a super huge uh comedian fan and he would definitely be into all this stuff but yeah it's um it's an interesting process for sure Uh i'm so sorry um (laughs) are you the drum player or the bass player so i'm the drummer okay the bass player could not make it my twin brother that's Uh, a legitimate question legitimate question because i was like wait a minute did we just talk to the drummer or the bass player when we were like after the um the After show. the show, yeah, I was like, "Who am I speaking to right now?" But then I didn't ask. I was there was just so much going on. No, I'm that's so sorry. okay. That's okay. So I was the drummer. We did meet, um, and I'm Jason. Wait, and were you the one who did the spid with me? The um, recording. I had, yes, that was, was you. The two okay. of us. Yes, that yes. was us two. Yes. And then the other two who are not here again. Uh-huh. We're not there that time. Because they so, were in the back. Par for the course. They are <laughs> not here. And it's just us. Mm-hmm. Just, just, just the, us. Just the two of us. <laughs> Chatting on WRPN. Yeah, look like what the you two did two there. <laughs> Clever boy. You and us. How long has it been since we've done a spit? What do you mean, how long? We do station identification every hour. On the hour. How how long has it been since you've since I've made them? Have you since you've done a spit? Today, today or like in this? Right now. Today? Yes. Oh. Oh, do you wanna the have me play one? Maybe the one that they recorded? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I hear okay. it. I've never heard it. Okay. Oh snap. Them. Uh they got this. Here you go. Oh wait, I forgot. No, now we're good. Hi, this is Jason. This is Ben. From Under the Den, and you're listening to WRPI Troy. 91.5 FM. Sorry, thank you. I kept Nailed in, it. I kept in that little <laughs> part at the end because Why? I thought it was funny. Yeah, it was cute. It, 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 it was funny. Is. It's adorable. Okay. It's so it's real. Fresh. Yeah, those are the exact kind of flaws that make things genuine. You know? That's the vibe. That is. <laughs> we talk so much about the vibe. Yeah, that, that is the vibe. One hundred percent. Flaws and scars and all. The vibe. Under the dent, scars and all. That's the new album name. Whoa. Uh oh. Call me on that. Wait a minute. This is recorded. I will be holding yeah, you to that. Okay. Scars and all. Under Good. the dent, scars and all. Because the other option I wasn't too stoked about, so. Or we don't talk about that. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Can we talk about it? No. We're okay. just goofing. Yeah, <laughs> just, just, just new boot goofing. Oh. All right. Unless if my um, fellow uh, interviewers have any more questions, do you? I can't think of any. All right. Um, mm. We're going to have uh, just like a couple more uh, one more, like, kind of serious before we go into uh, some speed round stuff. Ooh, speed round. Okay. All right. Um, so, recently, you guys were nominated for Record of the Year for the Eddies. Yes. Mm. Are you guys excited? Uh, very excited. Very excited. Um, just to be in such good company. And I think it really kind of speaks to, uh, not just for our, our category, but just kind of looking through all the categories, how much talent there really is in the 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 local scene here in the 518 but um you know especially to be nominated for not just us as a band but something that we created you know the fact that it got like a nomination that's i think i was kind of blown away when we found out that we had that nomination um but yeah super excited we were we actually up i, for mean, I was definitely year. expecting some nomination not necessarily that one but i knew that you know we nailed it this year so mm-hmm. 
We had one last year. We did, yeah. We had one last year for uh, best rock, best alternative okay. rock band. It was like best rock slash oh, indie or something. Slash, yeah, uh, something, something that they could lump us in with. Yes, and um, you know, and that was the fun. Uh, the, the ceremonies got to after COVID. They had to have them at some other venues, but uh, traditionally they were always at historic Proctors in Schenectady, and it's back there now. And it's it's such a nice venue to bring everyone in the music and you know scene and industry like these the artists and the photographers and the zine people and everybody Mm -hmm. the radio people everybody who's a part of this kind of pulse around the region gets to come together and dress up or not dress up and just hang out and smile and have fun and Mm -hmm. and nobody's ever you know there's i've never seen any like a cooler like camaraderie moment yeah and then a couple like we were at the listen up awards and that was just such a chill like intimate environment of just a bunch of like-minded individuals coming together to celebrate just doing this at all mm-hmm. and that that was really nice and refreshing yeah. just really refreshing mm-hmm. so yeah we're very excited about the eddies on Sunday, we get to go Sunday. Then? Yes, yeah. I won't. I won't be around. For I that get one, to go Sunday. But you get to go Sunday. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my cousin's getting married. Now, uh, do you want me to play "Hold On" so that the listeners can maybe, if they really like it, uh, root for you guys on Sunday? Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, well, yeah. Get it out there. All right. Here Thanks. is "Hold On." DJ Bonfire. <laughs> Questions without reply. The silence fills with words born from where your fears lie. Your mind it suffocates, but you're too strong to break. Sometimes the only thing we have is.
right. That was Hold On. All right. Uh, we are almost done. Uh, but before we leave, uh, do you want to tell listeners um, about any more times you're going to be performing live in the next uh, couple of weeks, months? Yes, we'd love to do that. Actually, tomorrow night down at Polly's Hotel down there in Albany, New York. It's right on Central Ave. We're going to be playing uh, a couple friends of ours in a band, Makes My Blood Dancer, coming into town. And we're going to be supporting them. From New York City. Yes. Uh, and there's a bunch of other um, local acts that... Uh, too much for me to recall off the top of my head right now because I'm just so into this whole moment that sometimes uh, things slip my mind. Um, yeah, I'm not going to go listening because if I forget anybody, I'll feel bad. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'd rather play just it. Just check it. Check it out online. Check it out on one of our and pages. If, that is if that's something you're interested in. That was, sounds like it would be interesting to you. We are tomorrow night, Paulie's Hotel. But also, um, we have uh, quite a few dates coming up. All of our dates uh, can be found... Um, on www.undertheden.com if, if you're coming are, to see us it sounds cool to you definitely uh, definitely we definitely have another great show coming up in Albany at the Fuse Box the historic Fuse Box in Albany also on Central Lab a very different part of Central Lab and that is uh, June tw- uh, oh. June 23rd with our friends in Platinum Moon, also from New York City. We have a lot of friends from New York City yes. that we're playing with. All right, funny, I, funny I don't enough. I'll put this together when I'm booking them individually, but man, there's really some patterns that stick out once you get them all down here. We have, um, we have a date coming up May 19th with Twilight Drive. That's up in uh, Nanola. We do May 7th. A, May 7th. May 7th. Oh, yes. The Capitol. How could we forget that? May 7th up at Putnam Place. So 30, 35th anniversary of Capitol Underground, our friend, our dear friend Ralph Renna. Uh, has Troy been, native Ralph Renna. Troy native Ralph Renna has been doing radio and music around here for decades now. Uh, he used to run a radio show on 88.3 that did hardcore and metal music uh, late night Mm -hmm. and it was like what I grew up listening to and really got me into that Um, and just uh, just been around forever and this is a fun show a bunch of different bands right yes all different genres Um, three stages two stages two stages two stages it's not just about rock but there's going to be rock there's going to be some heavier rock. There's going to be some some rap music. Uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. That's uh, May 7th uh, up at Putnam Place. We usually do a once-a-month emo night as well. Um, once or twice a month, we do our, our, our little version of our emo night. It's, it's emo songs and also songs that kind of inspired us um, that we kind of do our own little twist on. Sure. Uh, and we do those out and about uh, up in Saratoga, Schenectady. Uh, all over the place, and if you know, like like we've said, if if any of those sound interesting, you can find all of our dates. I think we recently posted uh, yep. our, our schedule for yep. the next co- upcoming months as well. Uh, bands in town, Reverb Nation, yep. uh, our website, Instagram, sure, Facebook has a widget, I think too. Mm-hmm. Anywhere. All right. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Now on for uh, the fun part of this. Yes. It's the speed round. Woo! Speed round. I've been waiting for this this whole time. Speed round! So, um, <laughs> all of a, you're, you're going to get points based off of this. We'll all give you points <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> oh. um, yeah, so, you know, do your best. It's a speed round. Uh, be fast. Have fun. Uh, are you guys ready? Born ready. Oh, you took the words right out of my mouth. Born ready. ready. All right. Apparently, from... What Eminem has told me, this is a very hard question. Choose one of these bands to remu- remove from human existence. Green Day, Linkin Park, or The Strokes? Green Day. Thank you. <laughs> Green Day, Linkin Park, or The Strokes? Yes. Uh, Green Day. It's Green Day for me as Thank well. Thank you so yeah, much yeah. for saying that. I was so scared you were going to choose. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Go on. This is free run. No, I could not uh, say The Strokes only because of the collaboration with Andy Samberg. I would say it was mm-hmm. one of the funniest things I've ever seen. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's nothing to do with their music intention. It's just Julian Casablanca. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I have another question for you guys. If you guys formed in like the 50s or 60s, what would your sound be like? Or what um, would your music sound like? Uh, a lot of like northern English speed uh, fueled like late night club music. A lot of like what Led Zeppelin would have listened to before they became Led Zeppelin. Okay. Uh, I would have called it uh, 
like uh they ha- if you're familiar with the uh genre of music skiffle i feel like we would have been real good at skiffle yeah like a, like a, like, 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 a, like, a, like a punk rock skiffle but punk rock if it was the 50s punk rock wouldn't have technically been around but <laughs> just a very kind of up skiffle if you will it would have been fun and maybe like a little sexy maybe maybe just a little but daring for sure <laughs> yes. whatever yeah excellent yeah. question now, maybe a little divisive question uh, mm-hmm. later on. Uh, who's the best driver? Me. Oh, that's me. Oh, I'd say it's me, but that's fine. We don't. Okay. Agree to disagree. <laughs> um, favorite TV show? Currently or all time? It's always sunny in Philadelphia. I, uh, either. Uh, it's break, always sunny Breaking Bad? Uh, all time, probably. Uh, currently, Ted Lasso. I was just recommended. To, like recommended that that show. It's amazing today. It's amazing. I just watched. Uh, I just watched an episode before I uh, left my house for the day this morning. Um, and yeah, the the mo- it's not the most recent episode, but oh man, it was it was really good. They really touch on a lot of different topics in a very like good way. Anyway. All right. Um, do you believe that it is either morally wrong or maybe like you know philosoph? Uh, philosophically wrong for a vegetarian to eat animal crackers? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I know. Okay. Um, if you could only listen to one song for the rest of your life, which song or what, what would it be? Oh my god! Do you have one? Because I do. It's uh, the Rain song by Led Zeppelin. Oh my god. It would probably at this point in my life, ah oh man, probably Prison of Heaven by the Ava Brothers. That's one clever song. Uh, favorite place in the area? Um, for anything specific? No. Oh, it can be even as small as just like a little patch of green somewhere. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry, I uh, that 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 one is a little tricky. Um, go ahead, Jay. I really enjoy this new mural in Schenectady that I drive by on the way to practice. It says "Imagine," and it's done by this local artist in like this kind of tag street style, and it's really cool. And it's on the side of the uh, Habitat for Humanity building, so it's really just you know community inclusive. And it's just really awesome, just street art in in like a sanctioned way, which I think uh, the capital district hasn't really uh, got on that yet. To like let's use some of these amazing street artists that we have around here, and maybe hire them to do amazing street art on mm-hmm. purpose, mm-hmm. as opposed to just doing it in back alleys or on trains that we have to see. So uh, I think that's a really good inspirational spot for me, definitely, just because seeing where Schenectady's come. And just this area. Uh, what about? And then for food, for sure. Uh, for food, my my. Gotta, what's your favorite food spot, food. bro? What's your favorite food spot? My bro? favorite food spot. Well, I uh, I I had something for just like kind of fit. It's oh, go not, ahead. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, I think it's it's a very specific thing, but there's something for me personally about when I'm if I have to drive into Troy at night on Alternate Route Seven. Um, when it's like a clear night and like the city's just like the hills are just kind of lit up i always really enjoy that um food's favorite food spot uh i i'm a big fan um osteria danny up in saratoga springs is probably one of the best meals i've ever had um their caravalli is also awesome in saratoga yeah what was it called the which one the one i said yeah uh osteria danny uh, it's just it's a very kind of small spot it's i believe danny's the chef and owner um it, i just made a reservation because uh we got my my wife and i got my parents a uh a gift certificate to there as an excuse to try to get them to come up from uh downstate and i had to call and the reservation is in like an automated line it's literally like danny's wife like mm-hmm. doing all the reservations which i think is it's kind of old school and cool awesome. um but yeah, it, it, it's tough to like pick just one. There's a lot of... 15 Church up there is also really good. 677 Takeo. Prime down in uh, Takara. Yes, oh my goodness. Well, yeah, I mean, if you're going to spend that kind of money, yes, 677 Prime is also going to be awesome if you have that. If you're if you're a four, a $5 sign kind of spender for dinner. Mm-hmm. Listen, sometimes. Sometimes, yep. Um, I mean, yeah, I could go, go to Cafe Caprizio when I have the budget. Okay, so I have a, a kind of goofy question. Um, let's say... 
hypothetically, you had to, for some reason, like change the instrument that you played uh -huh. for the rest of your career, uh, what would that instrument be? Keys. Um, shoot. Probably, uh, probably, probably drums. Like if I, it'd be like a lot of this. I'd be, I'd be, I'd be this guy. I'd stand obviously the whole time, and there'd be a lot, lot of, of like, a lot of this. <laughs> There'd be a lot of that. There'd for the viewer, for the listeners, I almost said viewers. For the, I did, I did they, say they viewers. Yeah. For the they listeners, he's doing chair. some kicks. They can do some the jump chair. kicks. They knew what Gymnastics. was going on. Uh, but yeah, probably drums. Uh, I, you know, I, I already do play them, just not like professionally. Just give me bat bat drummer. Just give it bat 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 drummer. Just give it bat. Just give it bat bat drummer. That's right. Everybody, all guitar players want to be drummers. Don't kid yourself. So everyone, everyone out there, don't kid yourselves. If you have a, a guitar player in your band, he wants to play your drums all the time. All right. From my personal experience. Right. Um, Wait, I think you had a question before this. Did I accidentally delete it? No, I was actually going to skip this one. Oh, okay. I, I, what? I was going to skip this one because I want to I wanna do this one. Um, all right. So... Uh, you guys have already given us a uh, pre-recorded station identification. Do you want to give us another one? Maybe a fun one? Sure. That sure. Good We're saying the same things, using the same information. Or do you want us to do you kind of what we did off air? Off like, hey, 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 you listen to WRPI 91.5. With DJ B -B 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 Bonfire <laughs> oh, <geez>. and crew. <laughs> Turn it up to 11 and rip the knob off. And then tell your mom to shut the door, because this is not a phase. This is WRPI. <laughs> like something like that? Stuff yes. like that? Oh, yeah, that was amazing. <laughs> yes, that, that was perfect. All right. All right, unless there's any more questions for speed round? No? no All right. Was good no? Okay, good, that good, was good job, guys. Really uh, awesome. Since I am the one in the main control seat here, I will go last. Emmett, uh, how many points are you awarding under the den? Out of uh, out of what? Uh, that's your determination. <laughs> oh, so what I was doing was like each question, I I was giving them points out of five for like their answer. Um, but I don't know what you did. That's super judgy, you guys. I didn't know that was going on. Sorry. <laughs> well, that's what Shay said to do. Better, yeah, I would have oh. given better answers. But I appreciate that we didn't know. I appreciate that it was a blind yes. study. Yeah. Yeah. Well, just no, award any amount of that. points you want. Um, forty-two because it's the meaning of life. Whoa. It's Whoa. the answer to everything. It's L. Well, threes. I I missed a few questions. Just, just give them some points. <laughs> okay, I'll give you so five for your just first tell us one. We're good. <laughs> Three for your second one. Two for the third one. Mm -hmm. Two? <laughs> Do you remember what the third one was? No. Well, who is the best driver? I don't know. It was oh, just like a really simple agree. answer. Yeah. Oh, that too. That too. Um, I mean, four. I could go why I think I'm the best driver. I don't think we need to do that. On, I don't <laughs> think we ever need to have that conversation. I don't think it matters. Um. Yeah. And then the rest. I, yeah, I didn't do the rest. I was. I was just having fun and like listening to you guys. <laughs> just goofing. Banter. All right. The well, bands. So one thousand. On that one. All right. I'm going to give you guys uh, three gold stars. Yes. Out of... It's three gold stars. It's three gold stars. Oh, it's well, not out of anything. It's just three. It's not out of three. Okay, three gold stars out of the entire, like, three universe. You get three of the gold stars. Sweet. I think oh. that's a lot. That's a fair amount. I would yeah. Think. That's a little bit. Do you know how many stars there are in the universe? No, no, no. It's like you get one. You, like... It's you know how yours you now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If yeah. you got the sun, you would be like... Wow, sweet. I have the this, sun now. this is my son. Yeah, I'm not going to go live there, but I'm happy that it's I own it. That <laughs> okay. is mine. Yeah, they own three gold stars now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Which That's ones? worth it. You guys are rich. Worth it. Oh, man. It's worth it. All right. Then. Catch me right. Catch me figuring out fusion <laughs> <laughs> pretty soon. Uh, this has been an interview with Under the Den. I would like to thank you guys for coming up. No, thank you, oh, thanks DJ for Bonfire. Having us. Thanks for having us. And really, thanks. D -d 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 DJ Bonfire. <laughs> <laughs> On the ones and twos, 91.5 WRPI. 